Thank you so much for calling in. Please let me know your name and where you're calling in from. All right, we're going to give them a second. They might have put their phone down. We have a long wait, so people put their phone down, put me on mute. I get it. I totally understand. Everyone's saying take her to the Dollar Tree. I will later. I will later. Just left Family Dollar. Oh, yeah, we love Family Dollar. My kids, that's like, you know, core memory for them will be going to Family Dollar. Super fun. Hello, are you there? Pick me up. Pick me up. We'll give them like another minute here. I'll read the chat. Thanks for spamming all the smiley me? faces. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, how are you? Good, how are you? I think my live is lagging a little bit. It's a little behind. Yeah, it's, it's delayed. It's like a minute delay on the live, unfortunately. Okay. No worries. What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, my name is Gina. I'm calling from North Carolina, but I'll be moving to Florida soon. Awesome. Well, thanks for calling in. What's going on today? So I have a couple questions, but I'm going to try to keep it short so I can respect your time. I know you have like 10 minutes left. But, awesome. Um, Sounds good. My first question, I have a friend from college. His name is Andrew, and he was on a worship team. Um, God revealed to me this morning that he has a spirit of condemnation. And um, I want to be careful what I say because... I don't want to get flagged by YouTube, but he's basically in the Q community, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah. And I can't look at his Instagram page because it literally makes me so sad. Like, I have such an empathetic spirit. And my first question is, like, when does that become a bad thing? And my second question is, like, how do you pray for a prodigal? When does like, what become a bad thing? You like, having that feeling of sadness when you look at his stuff? Yeah. I mean, I would say you are you have the heart of God and God's heart broken over the lost, over those that are living wicked lifestyles, right? Like, if you're asking God, I want your heart, I want to break for what you break for, I want to know what hurts you, then yeah, you're going to hurt when you see friends and family that are living sinful lifestyles, friends and family that are lost, that are going to go to hell if they die. Like, we're heartbroken over that, and we're empathetic and sympathetic and all of that over it. Now, it probably gets unhealthy when you're dwelling on it, when you're continuing to, like, go on his page, for example. I think it could probably get unhealthy, but I would say I would, I would f use that empathy as fuel to pray for him, right? To pray for him even harder, to believe even more, and... The prayer I always pray is what I kind of told, I think, Reese earlier, was that the, the Lord would take the blinders off because we know the devil blinds the mind of unbelievers. So that it prevent them from hearing and receiving the gospel, right? It's that hard soil. So I, I pray, for example, like, Lord, take the blinders off, soften their heart, soften the soil, encounter them, remove the pride. And I, maybe this, it works, maybe it doesn't. I always do this, though. I go to spiritual warfare for people, right? Like, if I'm praying for you, yeah. you say your name is Gina, is that right? So if, so if I'm praying for Gina and you're say you're lost, I would be praying, I come against every spirit that's attacking Gina. I come against the spirit of pride. I come against the spirit of perversion. I come against the lying spirit. I mean, I go to war for people spiritually. And some people are like, well, it doesn't work if they're not in front of you, you know, doing deliverance. I don't know. I still pray. I still believe. I intercede for them. So I would still go after those spirits that are attacking him, go after those things and go to war and intercede on his behalf. Like we have the ability to stand in the gap for people. Because he doesn't have a connection to God, because he's not praying, you can stand in the gap and pray for him and pray the Lord draws him back to the body of Christ, to the church, to him. And he will have that experience. He will have that encounter. There will be a moment where he goes, oh, I'm in the pig pen. I want to go back to the Lord. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't continue to dwell on that sorrow and dwell on that you being down and going to his page. Like, if you know if you're going to get triggered if you go to his Instagram page, I, I wouldn't even go to his Instagram page, you know? Like, a lot of my old friends, I don't even go on their pages because I already know, one, it's not going to be appropriate to look at, but two, I'm just going to be, like, frustrated and um, discouraged because I'm still praying for them, you know? But I don't want to be discouraged and I don't want to be down, so I just keep praying and praying. I don't, I don't know if that answers your question at all, but I just think continual prayer is consistency, right? Persistence and consistency are the key to seeing prodigals saved and, and brought home. Yeah, I guess I want there to be a balance because, like I said, I'm a very empathetic person and sometimes that can turn into worry. Like, with my friend, I worry so much about him that, not that I don't pray about him, but, like, it just consumes my thoughts. Like, what if he never comes back to God? And then it makes me so upset. So, like, 
I just want to know like what the balance is. Like, yeah, I think that's unhealthy. Em- yeah, I would say that's unhealthy. At, at, at the point you're at now, where you're, it's consuming your mind. I, do, I definitely don't think that's the will of God. I think that's unhealthy. Um, I don't, I don't think that's normal for that to happen. So I would ask the Lord to, hey, remove this from me. I don't know, maybe it's something spiritual um, that you're going through that there needs to be some deliverance from. But I would say, yeah, don't worry. God knows our prayers even before we pray. Be anxious over nothing, but instead pray about everything. So I think it, when it gets into anxiety like that, where you're, you're actually going through like anxiety over it, you know? Like you said, it's consuming yeah. you. I didn't know it was at that level. I would say it's getting, it's unhealthy. And whatever's causing that, you need to step away from. So again, if it's looking yeah. at his Instagram, if it's talking to him, I would step away from that and pray at a distance because there could be some unhealthy connection there. And uh, you don't want that. You know, you don't want this to hinder you. You don't want him being hindered to start hindering your relationship with God. That's not something God wants. Yeah. So I think that could be yeah. a time where you go, all right, I need to step away from this. This is an unhealthy relationship and I need to really pray pray about what's going on here. Yeah. And my second question is, so my mom and I, we went on a fast at the beginning of the month. And the day before the fast, she revealed to me that there's a spirit of control and rebellion in my family. And I noticed that there's also generational curses, like a spirit of rage, depression, and religion. So my question is, like, I've, I'm kind of new to deliverance because I got set free from the spirit of depression and religion on Discord. Um, but how would I pray over, like, my family, for example? Like, how would I go to spiritual warfare over my family? I mean, you just... Pr- pray i mean if i had like a generational curse i would just pray that the curse would be broken you know i come against it i break the curse i renounce it in jesus name the blood of jesus breaks the curse there's not nothing really like special to it other than praying the sword of the spirit is wielded by our words right so the powers in the tongue of death and life the way we fight jesus fought the devil he wasn't like he arm wrestled him he used his words to speak forth the word of God. And it sounds so simple. You're like, well, give me something more complicated. And, and people, we all want more complicated, I, myself included. I'm like, give me something really complicated to do. I, I think about like, you know, Elijah, and the, uh, uh, the Elisha telling the man, Naaman that had leprosy, like dip seven times. And he's like, no, it has to be more than that. I want you to come lay your hands and wave over me. And the servant said, man, if he would have told you to do something complicated, you would have done it but he told you to do something simple as in just dipping and you don't want to do it. But the point is sometimes we want to overcomplicate things and I'm the same included. We want things to be like, feel like it's going to work when we do it, but it's very simple. It's our words. We speak forth life or death and we have the power when we speak scripture and we declare the word of God and we declare the blood of Jesus and we pray in the name of Jesus, the name that the father gave Jesus that's above every name, there's power to break these things. So you have the authority and the power to break these things off your life, to intercede and to pray for your family. And I don't I don't know that there is a specific prayer I would give you. I'm a little bit on the fence, even when it comes to like prayer books, you know, I think they could be a good start, but I'm, I'm a little bit leery of some of them because I think the spirit leads us. When we don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit prays for us and the Holy Spirit prays through us. And when you go into prayer, like, I don't want to, I don't want you to hear my voice. You know, I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit. And so sometimes I'm a little worried about when we give like people specific prayers they need to pray because I, I don't see it as ritualistic. I don't see this whole thing as like, this is the formula, which is why I've never put out like specific prayers. I think it's more spirit led. Let the Holy Spirit lead you into how you should pray for your family, how you should pray for yourself and, and don't overcomplicate it and know that you're free. You know, you're free from the curse. You've prayed, you've broken it. Um, you got to walk in that freedom as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't know if there was a right or wrong way to do it. Yeah. No, Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong way. I think you're doing it, doing good. Regarding that. And this kind of ties in with my first question, but when do you like, is there a point where you stop praying for someone or I don't know, that's probably a weird question, but I don't know. Sorry, my daughter, was, my daughter was at the door. Yeah, no, uh, there is a there is a time in Jeremiah where God says, stop praying for these people. They're religious, they're stubborn, they don't listen, they don't obey me, don't pray for them anymore. So we don't really see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, I can't think off the top of my head in the New Testament where I could tell you there's a place where that says it. Maybe in the New Covenant, it's different. I personally don't feel that 
way. I've never gotten to a place where I'm like, I'm done praying for this person. But again, there is a case in Jeremiah where the Lord tells Jeremiah, you're wasting your time. Stop praying for these people. They're um, stiff necked, stubborn, and rebellious. I just think in the new covenant, uh, we should just keep praying. We should just keep praying. So I, I, I don't personally teach people to stop praying for someone. I just continue to bug the judge. Because in the New Testament, I see the shameless persistence, bugging, God answers prayers. So I, I kind of teach that just because that's what I see Jesus modeling. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling in, Gina. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Have a good day. You too. Another great question. 